Yeah, in case you didn't hear about this, Michael Tracy, he started a chat room talking about wokeism, what it was, if it's gone, if it goes too far, well, the answer to that is yes, but uh, having that discussion. So it was him and some other people and uh, some black folks that wanted to talk about it, which originally started cordially, but um. Yeah, his rules is, is like uh, most chat rooms. Like, you state your opinion, you agree or disagree, you could push back. But uh, that's not the way these woke, these woke folks think. So, I'm not sure where this stems from. I think it's critical race theory, or one of its derivatives. But, um, basically, uh, if you're not black or you're not some other minority... Um, you can't have an opinion about blackness or the black experience in America or a minority experience. You basically have to accept what you're told, which is kind of interesting and makes for some entertaining struggle sessions like happened in this one. But, um, I don't see how it's effective at all. I mean, it's effectively entertaining, but I think it's going to create more racists than kind of anything. Because if you can't disagree and you can't have an opinion about something and you have to accept what you're told, uh, how is that supposed to get adherence? It's only going to result in pushback and disagreement and resistance against what it is you're actually trying to say. Uh, So this type of... um, Bullying, I can't see how it would ever be effective. I mean, you got some white people that uh, that cower to it, or uh, you know, get on their knees, apologize for being white. But uh, overall, I think it would do more harm than good. But th- it's like uh, six hours long, or five to seven hours long, something like that. But parts of it were quite entertaining. But, like, imagine if other groups did this. Like, imagine if the Jews were, like... And I I, I think some do this to a certain degree. You know, like, the you can't have an opinion about anti-Semitism because only I, as a Jewish person, can tell you what anti-Semitism is. You don't get to decide. Which, like, that's an extreme viewpoint. I think there's something to be said. Like, um, you can't tell me about the experience of being a man because you're not a man. It's like, okay, I mean, logically that kind of makes sense, but it doesn't mean a woman can't have an opinion or air her views about the experience of being a man. The fact that she isn't one actually might uh, have some insight. So it's just people trying to create these narratives to bully people around. But imagine if the Jews, for example, were... We're like, oh, you don't know anything about anti-Semitism and um, we're going to have the progressive stack and we're going to put Jews at the top. And you sit there and you fucking listen while we tell you what to think, what to do, what to say, when we give you, when and if we give you permission. That just seems like the stupidest thing ever and would uh, result in anti-Semitism as a result, probably. So even though a lot of people complain about, oh, we're, we're forced to watch... Schindler's List and like the Holocaust, blah, blah, blah. It's done more in a way of uh, agreement, right? Like we should teach Holocaust education in our schools. We should teach about uh, white extremism and national socialism type beliefs. It's not, it's definitely done in much less of a bullying way. But uh, it's just highly entertaining to me. Like, I used to go in some of these chats and fuck with these people where, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just madness to me, but it's entertaining. So you could take whatever your, I mean, I know like white people aren't, aren't considered an oppressed people or minority group, so they don't have any say supposedly, but like any group could act. Any group who's not, like, white male could act in this way, whether it's female, gay, disabled, 
Uh, but I guess that's the whole point of the progressive stack of uh, intersectionality. There's like a hierarchy of oppression, and so they get to dominate the others that are that are below. Uh, but I just think it's extremely counterproductive and stupid, but entertaining. Oh, because most of what I talk about is white nationalists, because I just find them to be the most entertaining and kind of like the craziest to me. I don't know if other people find that, but um, it's just an interesting phenomenon that I haven't really made like too many videos on. But anyway, yeah, if you're bored, go check out this. You can find it somewhere. The chick's name is Brooklyn, and it was done by Michael Tracy. But uh, it's kind of an entertaining watch. Oh, yeah, and then this headline. Somehow Brett Weinstein ends up. Um, so, yeah, they're saying, like, oh, we're black, and you have to accept what we say and uncritically take this to heart. Because if you disagree, you're, you're uh, you know, like, dismissing our experience and therefore promoting violence in some way uh but then this jewish guy gets on and they you know don't basically dismiss that fact like it's insignificant so it's like how do you how do you bully people and then expect not people people not to push back or bully you it's it seems definitely counterproductive like it's going to work against them um so i don't know are black people considered to be more oppressed than Jews. I mean, yeah, I guess so. That's what the consensus is in the United States anyway. But to me, this is just going to result in conflict and race war. Um, you're saying you have to accept my identity and my experiences, but I can reject yours. Yeah, that's not going to, that's not going to work out well. Uh, anyway, whatever. Check this out.